Yeah. Hi, Chris Williamson. Welcome to 10 by 6. Um, and for any of the Hi. viewers that are watching today, um, Chris was the um, Communities and Local Authority um, Shadow Minister between 2010 and 2013. And you were the MP for North Derby, Derby for Derby North. 2010 to 2015 and 2017 to 2019. Is that right? Correct. That's right. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Well, we invited you on the show today, Chris, to talk about obviously the the barbarity and the barbarism that's going on in, again in Israel. Um, and there's just two things I really wanted to focus on, particularly. You know, if you could just help us to understand the events that have led up to where we are today in Israel uh, in terms of the current situation. And then we'll move on just to look at maybe some of the solutions that, that you've considered for the people in that region. Well, it's not a new phenomenon, of course. And I think we need to go back uh, a lot further than the recent history, uh, really right back to the to the Nakba. And indeed, even before that, the, the, you know, the catastrophe where Israel was created at the behest of Great Britain. And that led to uh, three quarters of a million Palestinians being forcibly evicted from their homes. Uh, there's been uh, land acquisition and evictions ever since. And, you know, Palestinians are treated as second class citizens in uh, Israel. Uh, the nation state law, for example, uh, privileges uh, as a matter of constitution, as a matter of law, privileges uh, the rights of, uh, of Jewish citizens over uh, other uh, citizens of the country. And, uh, you know, Palestinians have seen the West Bank completely atomized. The, the notion of a two state solution, I think, is, is uh, it's a dead duck, really. Now it's not possible. Um, Gaza is the, uh, is the world's biggest internment camp. I think it's the third most densely populated strip of land anywhere on Earth. And it's been regularly, as we know, subjected to bombardments by the Israelis, inevitably killing children and civilians. And Obviously, uh, uh, recently, uh, during a very holy month of Ramadan, we saw the uh, you know, Israeli security services uh, uh, going into that uh, mosque and uh, throwing in stun grenades, smoke grenades, and uh, attacking people. Uh, and this was, I think, in relation to uh, a march uh, that uh, some right-wing uh, Israelis wanted to take part in going through the Palestinian quarter. They did in the end reroute the march. And uh, we saw some uh, horrendous scenes where uh, a lot of you know, right-wing extremists jumping and dancing with joy on the street as the, the compound of the mosque was on fire. You could see it in, in the background. It's just horrendous. And so understandably, you know, Palestinians uh, feel incredibly uh, aggrieved and badly treated. Uh, they've been, uh, ignored, I think, by the international community. Their, their rights have, have, have not been to the fore at all. Um, you know, e even the Oslo Accord, the so-called Oslo Accord, which led to the two-state uh, solution, I mean, that's even not being honored by Israel. I mean, land which is supposedly for the Palestinian people is being uh, occupied and annexed by Israel. On any basis, and of course, in this most recent thing is in relation to East Jerusalem, where I believe some Israeli courts have, uh, have ruled that, uh, you know, in favour of uh, you know, more settlements and so on. And uh, that's understandably caused considerable uh, upset and, uh, and anger amongst the uh, Palestinian community. And it should anger the entire world's community, because what they're talking about doing is, is forcibly removing people. From their homes it's like people coming to to your door the security forces coming to your door and say you've got to get out somebody else is going to live here we're going to knock it down i'm going to build something else it's just it's just unconscionable that this is going on in this day and age and i've spoken to a and c veterans uh who lived through the struggle against apartheid in south africa and they tell me that the apartheid system in israel is far worse than anything they ever endured and uh, you know things have obviously reached a uh, I've come to a head now and uh, you know the Palestinian people are, are seeking to to fight back and of course and they have an absolute right to do that they are an occupied people and uh, the additional protocol to the Geneva Convention gives the right in international law to occupied peoples to resist including armed resistance and yet the mainstream media the corporate media always focus on 
the response from the Palestinians, from the response from Hamas, and and talk about as, as if it's sort of aggression from Hamas, rather than actually focusing on the real focusing on the real aggressors, which is the Israeli state. Which is the fourth world's fourth biggest army. It uh, receives yeah. billions of pounds in uh, aid from the United States. Uh, is is a is a, a client of the uh, UK arms manufacturing industry, the military industrial complex here. I think uh, Britain actually over the last few years has sold, getting on for half a billion pounds worth of armaments to Israel, and they are uh, you know fighting against uh, you know people. I mean, you know, Gaza is is completely sealed off. They have no airport. The water is controlled by the by the Israeli state. It's, it's switched on and off at their will. Their energy is switched on and off at their will. I mean, it's horrendous state of affairs. I mean, you know, the the the, uh, the Palestinian people have been incredibly restrained, actually. I think in the circumstances, and I think it's incumbent on all of us to absolutely get behind the Palestinian cause and, and to call on our uh, political leaders to stand up to this Israeli uh, bulldozer. Uh, both metaphorically and, and real, in, in reality, because that's what they're doing. They're bulldozing people's homes. And the interesting conclusion, really, I suppose, uh, you know, the, the statement from our foreign secretary, the medium hour statement, was absolutely despicable. Again, sp focusing almost exclusively on uh, on Hamas and uh, no criticism of the Israelis. This this can't go on. And uh, as I say, I think it's really incumbent on us to to actually you know stand up and be counted. Their struggle, the Palestinian struggle, is our struggle, and we need to get behind them. In terms of the, um, thank you, Chris. In terms of the, the victory for the ANC eventually in South Africa, it's it's from the from external, from the outside world's perspective. It's like there were certain personalities, uh, obviously Nelson Mandela, um, Bishop Tutu, um, and and. Steve Biko and a number of others that that the West sort of grabbed onto as personalities and it helped the cause outside of South Africa. Do you think that the Palestinians possibly lack those types of personalities to really raise the imagination in the West? Well, I think this is a mass struggle, as was the ANC struggle. And yes, it's, it's quite handy sometimes to be able to pin your colours to a particular charismatic individual. But, you know, the, the, the struggle in South Africa wasn't won by Nelson Mandela on his own. Obviously, he was a figurehead and he, he was a leader and an inspiration, of course, a great inspiration to me personally, actually, uh, looking at his uh, travails that he endured and came through it with, with great dignity. But in the end, it was a mass struggle. Uh, and uh, and that's what we see in in, uh, in Palestine now. And of course, and they did have a charismatic leader in Yasser Arafat uh, in, in the past, you know. But I think it's it's wrong to try and sort of personalise it and say, well, you know, yeah. where's this kind of great leader going to come from? This is a mass struggle, and uh, you know, we need to. We need, I mean, there are people, of course, you know, uh, there who you know who, you know could come to 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 the fore. Uh, I'm sure, but um, they don't get the. Uh, the attention they don't get the publicity no uh, you know there are people obviously who are leading the struggle i mean it's, it's incumbent on on you know on the western media to actually you know speak to them but of course it's very difficult i mean you know you've seen abby martin when she's been trying to try for example just one journalist trying to report from uh palestine and particularly from gaza incredibly difficult to to do so yeah and, and so there's real censorship going on that's the problem of course there is absolutely um and and Moving on to the second sort of part of it, just, just briefly, what short term solutions and, and a longer term solution would, would you perceive to be um, the most favourable and sustainable option um, for the, well, the first thing I think is, well, the first thing I think is an arms embargo. Absolutely. Uh, I think holding uh, Israel's, feet to, Israel's feet to the fire in relation to applying ab abiding by international law, the uh, UN uh, resolutions. And uh, and to demand, I think that you know the United States in particular stops actually providing aid to them, the billion billions of pounds worth of aid to this to this country. They need to be isolated. They need to be called out. And I think that's the way in which we can uh, hopefully secure uh, a peaceful settlement. And I think ultimately, what's required there, I think the two, as I think I was saying at the beginning, two-state solution, I don't think is uh, is is a goer anymore, uh, if it ever was. I think a, a one-state one solution is, for me anyway, is, is, is what we should be seeking. A one-state secular uh, uh, state where there are equal rights for everybody. Right. And, and that would mean 
a singular government? Yes. Yes. I mean, the, the, you know, the Palestinians are second class citizens. They don't, they don't they, you know, they can't even vote for, the, you know, the people that are responsible know. for over their lives, you know. And, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, it's, 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 it's so appalling. It's so difficult sometimes to find the, the words to describe the horrors of, the, of what, is, what is happening and the fact that we are implicated. This nation is implicated. I mean, Britain that actually established the, the state of Israel in the first place and continues to endorse it and support it. Uh, arm it and of course you know the military industrial complex makes makes uh, you know huge profits out of yes. the turmoil in the middle east and uh, you know that's something else that we need to be called but i think it's a mass struggle that's happening there and we need to replicate that here and uh, and build a, a you know a mass movement to not just support obviously the, the palestinian struggle but to you know to, to actually press for our own uh, liberation as it were uh, from you know, the difficulties and travails that, that many people are experiencing nothing like of course what the palestinians are doing but nevertheless we do have major issues in this country with 40 million people living in poverty it's just one example and the way we're going to deal with that i think is through a mass struggle a, a mass movement relying on individual relying on sort of representatives elected representatives as we've seen is is a lost cause uh, and we've got to do things for ourselves i think and force change to happen thank you so much chris for coming on 10 by 6 that was Again, you managed to surmise it so well in, in such a short space of time. Thank you so much for that. Oh, thanks for inviting us on. Appreciate it.